Harmonic one LF noise is one of the several fundamental noise uh, types, together with, for example, thermal noise or short noise. Uh, one LF noise is a very fascinating and interesting phenomenon. As the title of the, or the name of the noise implies, it, it has a spectral dependence which is inversely proportional to frequency f. Uh, one LF noise, also referred as flicker or pink noise, was discovered by Johnson in 1925 when he was actually looking for experimental confirmation of Nyquist's formula for thermal noise. So the fascinating part for me in uh, one of noise is that despite its very interesting physics and uh, practical importance, and despite almost 100 years of investigations, this noise is still a little bit of a puzzle. The scientists, researchers, physicists or engineers still argue about the very fundamentals of, of this noise type. Uh, so as, we, as it stands now, conventionally it's believed that despite the common name, uh, all manifestations of one of noise that we measure in different electronic devices are not due to one common physical mechanism. Most likely there are different physical mechanisms in action which mean, uh, meanwhile have a mathematical similarities uh, which lead to noise spectral density which is inversely proportional to frequency. As a result, for any new material system uh, which you investigate for some sort of possible practical applications, it's important to, to measure one of noise and to minimize it. Uh, because one of noise is a limiting factor for sensitivity and also uh, for communication applications of new material systems. Graphene is not, is not an exception. If you would like to have some sort of possible practical application of graphene and electronics, we should uh, measure uh, one of noise understand its physical mechanism and try to minimize it for certain applications, at least. From the other side, uh, new features of electronic transport in graphene, uh, so the fact that the electron has a very different electronic dispersion. Uh, from the other side, uh, different physics of electron transport in two-dimensional systems such as graphene uh, opens up uh, new opportunities for understanding the very basics of uh, one of noise. In conventional electronic devices, one of noise or fluctuations in currents are usually associated with either fluctuations of the number of carriers in the channel. So if number of carriers fluctuates, current conducted by these carriers also fluctuates. Or from the other side, it could be associated with fluctuations in electron mobility because electrical current is proportional to number of carriers and electron mobilities. So the fluctuation in electron mobility can also result in fluctuation in current. For most of conventional materials, uh, fluctuations in currents with frequency dependence of 1 over f are attributed to fluctuations in the number of carriers. The conventionally accepted model to describe 1 over f noise by the fluctuation of number of carriers is called McWhorter model. And it's applicable to electronic devices which are made with conventional semiconductors. When we, when we initiated uh, investigation of 1 over f flicker noise in graphene devices in 2009, we were mostly interested first to see whether conventional models developed for regular semiconductors uh, could be used to describe uh, flicker noise in graphene. What we established is that overall the noise, low frequency noise, is indeed of one OF type in graphene and the absolute value of this noise is not that high. Initially we expected that the noise in graphene devices would be extremely high because graphene is just a surface, so it's only one atomic uh, layer of materials and electrons that propagate through graphene layer are ultimately exposed to traps and defects in uh, oxide uh, and as a result we would expect that there would be a lot of fluctuations in number of carriers. However, we established that one of noise level in graphene devices is not extremely high. So it's not as bad in some other material systems which were uh, introduced already into into market in some uh, commercial applications. The first interesting observation was that uh, one of noise in graphene does not follow the conventional model for uh, flicker noise desc as described by the Mark Water. This observation indicates that uh, in order to describe uh, electronic noise level in graphene you have to come up with alternative models and uh, understand the physics of uh, one of noise in graphene. In order to understand better the physics of 1OF noise in graphene, we undertook uh, a number of experiments. 
which were related to irradiating graphene with electronic beams. In a set of papers published in Applied Physics Letters, we describe our experiments of irradiating uh, graphene layers with electron beams. Exposure of graphene layers to electron beams results in creation of defects in graphene lattice itself and also in materials surrounding graphene, for example, in silicon oxide, uh, which is uh, used as a, uh, as a substrate uh, for graphene. Our initial expectation was that irradiating graphene with electronic beams would increase the level of 1OF noise, as it is in conventional materials. Normally, noise increases, uh, its level goes up uh, with the increased concentration of defects. So in conventional materials, uh, usually 1OF noise level increases, goes up as the number of defects, or concentration of defects increases. And one can understand it because if you have more different defects with different time constants, more of the defects can contribute to 1OF noise. Uh, they can capture electron from each channel and emit it back. However, what we observed in graphene was different. And it really surprised me at the beginning. So what we have seen that uh, after introducing defects through electron beams, the 1OF noise in graphene devices was going down. As a trade-off, of course, with decreasing noise, electron mobility in these devices was also going down. But still, uh, the value of electron mobility was within, uh, uh, within the range of interest for applications. After conducting additional measurements and uh, uh, examining the available literature, we came up with the explanation why it's happening in graphene. Uh, after introducing more defects, uh, we observed decrease in the overall noise level. It turns out that in terms of flicker 1OF noise, graphene behaves more like a metal than like a conventional semiconductor. Uh, and the decrease in the noise level could be explained by the fact that the dominant uh, contribution to noise is coming from mobility fluctuations rather than from fluctuations in number of carriers. So these experiments, which we uh, described in a set of papers in Applied Physics Letters, allowed us to clarify uh, the physical mechanism behind 1OF noise and graphene. So it, it is more related to fluctuations in the mobility of carriers rather than fluctuations in number of carriers in graphene channel. Uh, of course, using this data, we can now improve, uh, uh, further reduce the noise level in graphene devices where it's needed. Ever since discovery of 1OF noise by Johnson in uh, vacuum tubes, together with the question whether the noise is of mobility fluctuation or number of carriers fluctuations was another important question. And that question was whether the noise is coming from the volume of the conductor, or bulk of a conductor, or from the surface. There have been numerous uh, attempts to investigate um, whether the noise is surface phenomenon or 1OF noise is a volume phenomenon. And of course, there have been uh, uh, several different alternative explanations of 1OF noise. Of course, the most straightforward way to answer this question would be to take a conductor, let's say a metal, and change its thickness all the way to when you have just one atomic layer or plane. Many groups attempted this. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, the, the, the known report of uh, noise coming from metallic conductors with reducing thickness uh, reported uh, noise from a metallic conductor with a thickness of about 9 nanometers. It is technologically not possible to go to, to smaller thicknesses in case of metal, because then you would have, a, uh, because the roughness of metal films is very high and you may end up with pinholes, uh, non-continuous metal film. Emergence of graphene and few layer graphene films changed the situation. It, allows, it allowed us to conduct investigation of 1OF noise level as a function of thickness from a uh, volume conductor, which, which is essentially a thin graphite film, all the way down to a single atomic plane, which is graphene. By doing so, we were able to address this almost a century old question directly. So the focus of this investigation was to answer the question whether noise is coming from the surface or it still comes from the volume bulk of conductor. We investigated samples where the thickness of uh, few layer graphene samples varied from just one atomic plane, so which is graphene by definition, to up to about 15 to 20 atomic planes. And the change was uh, one by one layer, so continuous change. Uh, it, cost it, it took enormous efforts of my graduate students who verified the thickness of these conductors using Raman spectroscopy 
and atomic force microscopy. What we discovered is that, as it sometimes happens, the truth was in the middle. So the noise was not completely just a surface phenomena, and it was not completely a volumetric phenomena. It turns out that um, when, if the thickness of the sample is below seven atomic planes, the noise is dominated by contribution from the surface. However, for thicker samples, uh, the noise is becoming more of a volumetric phenomenon. We address this issue on an example, specific example of few-layer graphene. However, we think that the physics would be similar in conductors made of uh, other materials. What was crucial for this study is that you can vary the thickness of few-layer graphene with a strict precision of just one atomic plane because of specific crystalline structure of, of graphite. Uh, which has very strong sp2 bonds in plane and weak van der Waals forces uh, between the planes. So you can exfoliate them one by one and then study thickness dependence uh, with the accuracy of just precision of one atomic plane. I believe that investigation of uh, flicker 1OF noise in graphene um, is very important both for practical applications of graphene devices but also for understanding the fundamental physics of low frequency flicker noise in material systems and the possibility of tuning the thickness of few-layer graphene samples with precision of one atomic plane uh, uh, is very important for understanding whether the noise is surface or volume phenomena. From the other side, a different dispersion of electrons in graphene allows you to compare properties of uh, flicker noise in this material system with conventional material system where dispersion is parabolic.